You are about to experience how I conquered Arabia. Estimate there we are nearly failed while trying. By the way, we have some crazy twists and turns in this video that you for sure won't see coming. This video contains all 100 plus turns this mission took to complete. So get ready for quite a ride. Obviously this was played and recorded with the Divided Empire mod enabled. Before we can begin our expedition into Arabia, we need a strong foundation to build our kingdom. Originally, I intended for us to take it slow, unifying each Ethiopian tribe one at a time. Oh well, what an eventful turn one we find ourselves in. This intense situation and the fact that we didn't even have access to decent units yet caused us to muster whatever trash troops we had available. Luckily, we start this campaign with a couple of elephants to pretty much carry us through this conflict. The first to fall was Axum and Ptolemaeus Theron soon thereafter. With our neighbors dealt with and the real mission of this campaign about to begin, I should probably explain my plan for all of this. So as PT is our only port, we intended to launch our invasion from there. Our spies, which I already had deployed a few turns earlier, revealed how the Sabaeans of Arabia Felix were fighting alone in a major war between Hagar, on the complete opposite end of the peninsula, and the far inferior Himyas to the south. Seeing this as an easy way to get an ally on the other side of the Red Sea, we declared war upon the slave traders, whose lands are so close to ours. Besides, this is a rare resource we could get access to and also a port, which would make travel from our homeland to Arabia way easier. So that was it then. We could also have gone for Nabatea, but their larger size scared me, especially with their close relations with the Egyptians, whom we definitely don't want to engage. After securing most of the south, the plan was to... <laughs> well, <laughs> take out the rest of the tribes one by one, till it only was Saba left, I guess? Honestly, I don't know. I didn't really get that far in my strategy. Something I completely forgot to take into consideration was logistics and supply lines. Oh how stupid I was! The voyage alone from PT to the Arabian coastline took two turns. And if you didn't know, DI is so merciless that armies traveling across the sea suffer massive amounts of attrition. By the time our army arrived, we had already lost one third of our army. This was then followed up by the Lost Their Way event, which caused our army to basically be a sitting target. And did we then retreat after this? No, of course not. Instead our army foolishly continued into the desert where the Himya forces waited for us. Our men didn't stand a chance as they were butchered by the Arabian general Samar. At least none of them got to experience the extreme summer. Fuck me, that screwed me over throughout this mission. There was nothing else to do but recruit a completely new army. We did still have some of our elephants as I didn't bring them all across the first time around. Only some random mercenary ones. We did also get a few better equipped warriors to hopefully turn shit in our favor. Learning from the last voyage, I did also construct a few supply ships so the sea wouldn't obliterate us again. The Sabaeans did also have to complicate things by swapping settlements with the Himya, forcing us to trespass on our intended future friends which made them absolutely hate us. The only real reason this settlement swap was a problem is that this new settlement we had to take as our foothold in Arabia was so damn far inland. Reinforcements will only be an idiotic wish, and as the city was placed at a crossroad, it means armies would march through it all the time, which utterly destroys the food supply for any army in the region. Well, only for us as the AI always cheats in that regard. Well, nevertheless, meet Arakamani, probably the least tactically intelligent commander in all of our kingdom. Or at least he was the man who cared the least for all of his troops. Basically his main tactic was to grind his way through the enemies and wish for the elephants to save the day. I mean, he kept winning battles, but he sure does give me Pyrrhus vibes, especially after the second battle although you can't really blame him for being outnumbered 3 to 1. With desert attrition in addition to all of this, I might add. It did mean we didn't have to scale their high walls, but our entire army was in ruins, again. After this, we slowed down our conquest to a standstill. 
Basically, everything I tried to muster in Marib had died to the sun, and no one wanted to trade with us. Not even the Sabaeans due to us being forced to trespass into their land in order to bring an end to the Himyars. Marib itself was a mess, rebellions kept popping up, and the attrition was so bad our Kamani even felt bad for his men. Supposedly, Ma'ad, our god, believed this crisis of ours was due to the horrible rulership of the queen. Basically, the entire population demanded her to commit suicide, thus making our fucking admiral the new faction leader. The final nail in the coffin was the fact that we were running low on funds. Dangerous low. So as we couldn't launch another war from Marib, we had to take a new approach. One that I didn't want to make. Yeah, this wasn't really close. Our new army is superior in so many ways it's insane. Time for the Nepotean response. But our luck had to slip up sooner or later. The other Arabian tribes figured out our intentions with our many attacks and decided to put fate into their own hands. It didn't take long for all of Arabia to declare war on us. And we can't forget the worst of them all, right to the north of our unguarded homeland, Egypt. The Ma'ins cleverly split up their two armies. One was said to occupy our forces in Nabatea while the others stealthily snuck past our patrols to reach Marib. This basically locked down our gold surplus, meaning we had to be swift in order to avoid bankruptcy. We sent our larger army into the desert in an act of revenge, while a second army, which I quickly had mustered, besieged Petra. However, as the Batan forces returned home from wherever they now were before, it fouled our plans forcing us to be stuck in a standstill trying to defend our Nepotean holdings. A lot of back and forth happened during this time, with Yathrib in the desert falling to our enemies multiple times. But due to our war with Egypt, we were able to secure quite a sweet deal with the Seleucids. But speaking of Egypt, you are about to experience the incredible journey of Indibilis, the madman who became famous for killing a crocodile with his bare hands. Ever since the declaration of war from Egypt, he had spent some time preparing a board patrol regiment. The only thing is, he has had enough of sitting around waiting for the Egyptians to potentially overwhelm our towns. So this mad lad went up towards Upper Egypt where he would usurp the Hellenic garrisons, thus freeing the locals and arming them to help overthrow the Ptolemaic dynasty. Our intel indicated most of the hostile forces were in Jerusalem or Petra which we also had liberated by now, meaning our little surprise attack here was, well, perfect. We managed to free Memphis and even occupy Ammonium for ourselves. Egypt had been pushed back to the Mediterranean. We did try to push them a bit further, but discovered a major Hellenic army at Paratonion, which the cunning Indibilis miraculously avoided to engage. After this close call, the crocodile killer decided to march home and prepare an army to assist in the third invasion of Arabia Felix. This was fine because apparently he had already done more than enough in Egypt by inspiring the locals. The many rebel cells we had created were powerful enough to overthrow the Ptolemaic dynasty. Or at least that is what happened throughout the rest of the story, which is why Egypt never really actually turned out to be a problem for us. 
Oh well, back to the main mission which is to conquer all of Arabia. We still held the lands of Nebatea, but just barely I might add. We have been under constant pressure being attacked from the north, east and south simultaneously. Saba, our kind of French, Ish, have been eradicated by Hagar, who have become our main enemy throughout this war. Like for real, enter a province and they are there. I leave my settlement alone for one turn and Hagar they are fucking there. So in an effort to deal with these enemies of ours, we send our most seasoned army south along the coastline. However, here they would face many challenges throughout their way. Apart from the sun itself, they had to face countless armies of which the first one was easily sorted to the side. But when it came to facing Hagar, it was something else. Okay, I admit it might have had something to do with our dumb tactic. Basically, we split our army in two, hoping for the enemies to do the same. This would then result in a massive gap between their lines for us to exploit. But at least our archers did well. With yet another equally powerful army demolished and Eudaemon in our hands, it was time for Indibilius to sail for Arabia. However, I have a slight feeling we are only able to keep control of the land where our strongest armies are. The northern holdings were guarded by the impulsive Arakamani, who foolishly ended up falling for one trap after another, resulting in his execution and the fall of Yathrib once again. But at least we have married now. And the supply shortage. Honestly, I was certain it would foil our plans of capturing Muscat. Luckily, we were more than capable of dealing with such a shitty settlement. By now, all of Nebete had fallen to rebels and bandits. The same was threatening to happen to the slave traders of Eudaemon and Hagar. Well, of course, they are pressuring Marib. But at least Egypt is being pushed out of Jerusalem now. We deal with the threats, but are forced to recruit auxiliaries as our manpower is running low. We eventually raise a gun, making sure to kill every last one of them. All that was left now are the settlements we once held in Nebatea. But first we had to march our armies through the devastating desert, where we had to face off against Kinda and the forces of Yathrib in a battle of the ages. We didn't have any more elephants to save the day. This was all about the tactics and skills of our commander in Dibilis, the crocodile killer. Any here fought before in defense of our people, fought for the honor of our gods and our ancestors. Some, well, some of you just like to fight. This day is no different. We can vanquish this pack of mangs ridden dogs. Who's with me? Our archers found a gap between the lines to fire their arrows straight into the weapon side, causing an incredible amount of damage. Our camel auxiliaries caused havoc behind their lines, but we all knew the battle would be decided by our sacred guards. With this decisive victory in the desert, all that was left to conquer could be found in Nebatea. But as our enemies made a failed crossing over to our lands by the courtesy of our Admiral faction leader, it meant Chamuthas was recaptured without much of a fight. Peace finally fell upon Arabia after over 100 turns of turmoil. We now occupy all of southern Arabia with our liberated allies safeguarding the north. It is over. <laughs> nah, bitch. This is called Total War for a reason. 